questions and then pass the microphone so you can just sit there and uh, answer. Is that okay for everybody? Good. Um, who's going to start off? Um, oh. Thanks. Uh, I, 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 I hate to do this, but I'm going to make a little bit of a comment as, as opposed to a question. Uh, Andy Berg from the IMF. I, was mentioned a few times. I look forward to reading the 62-page uh, paper, and, and the, the points are well taken, many of them familiar to us. But I, I have to say that the recommendation to use the WID and not the SWID reminds me of someone saying that they've done the pros and cons, and really bicycling is better than driving. Okay, you know, that's useful for some purposes, that compares that, that suggestion, but for many others, it's not. Uh, if, if what we've done is create demand by, with our work to create demand for better cross-country comparable databases, that's great for me. I have no particular vested interest in the, in the SWID, and when that bike can cross the ocean, we'll take it, you know. Uh, but, but, but I do think that, if I, again, if I can permit myself, listening to the various presentations, both just now and, and Tony Shorrocks before, I am struck with how much imputation and how much judgment goes into all these series. And, and I do think that you know, if we sent Spanish statisticians to Mexico and Mexican statisticians to Spain to measure GDP, we would see huge uh, differences in views about what the GDP was the, across those countries. We know that GDP levels sometimes jump by 50% when people do revisions in many countries, not in rich countries, but in developing countries. And we know that when you, you go back and see they change the weights from 94 to 2000, and now the growth rate series looks totally different. You know, that doesn't stop us from even putting GDP growth on the left-hand side, let alone putting the level of GDP on the right and, and in regressions. We look at, when we do growth, when we analyze growth, we measure institutions on the right-hand side. Imagine the measurement error and the variation across researchers in measurements of institutions. Openness. We always put openness, not we, but we as a profession put, put openness on the right-hand side. What does that even mean? So I applaud, uh, 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 I really applaud these efforts to get better databases, but I do think there would be an element of sort of inequality if we users of these databases were told we, we kind of have to wait uh, till we get the, the inequality data that can be put on the, on the right-hand okay. side. Um, let's try and have some uh, questions. Who, are you managing that? I think just to respond, I will respond a bit to that to say I think the trouble with the SWID uh, data is that there, there is a gap in the market there and this is what I mean, res the researchers want inequality data and they want it for every year and uh, there is a vacuum there and if someone, if our collective responsibility really is to try to provide the best data or simply make it quite clear that nobody should be trying to get data for years where we don't haven't got any data but uh, you know, I think, I think uh, there is a gap there, there is a vacuum, and it's going to be filled uh, by somebody, and it would be better to have it filled by somebody who knows what they're doing. Jose Maria Largo from uh, Universidad CEU San Paulo from Spain. Apologize if my, my question is very easy, but uh, I recently read some working papers from Pinkowski and Salai Martin, and they use exclusively data from national accounts instead of surveys. I would like if anybody of the uh, commentators or, or uh, presenters uh, could give me some light why national accounts are more uh, quality or, or, le or lower quality than surveys. Thank you. Okay, who else will we, uh, uh, this, uh, can we, oh, okay, good. Well, this, uh, now, uh, this is a comment and, uh, on uh, Steve I'd like, Jenkins. I'd like questions rather than comments, but okay. the comment can no, be no, short. No, the comment in the sense that I, I am, uh, I can claim to be the father of wit. And actually, the idea was that WID uh, was supposed to be just a collection of information. And for every number, there were like six fields which were being filled in. And in the end, the data were rated. And there was a big uh, uh, warning at the beginning of the database saying, don't use this for, uh, uh, let's say, time series regressions and so on and so forth. And if you want to do that, use data which do come exactly from the same type of service and so on and so forth. 
So that basically then, since the market demands uh, regression uh, support, I mean, uh, data supporting regression analysis, that actually the, the, the users have been using this data wrongly in some cases. So we suggested that you can do regression analysis if you choose data which are, come from comparable surveys and same income concept, uh, same coverage, and so on and so forth. Now, people are making, uh, perhaps you should lock up the data. I mean, I don't know. But uh, the, the original idea was not that uh, use this information provides you, you should use all the data. Even the, the one rated one as consistent because they, they were clearly indicated they were coming from different cities. Now, a brief comment on uh, Francois. I think that uh, comparing the discrepancies that exist on African data or Eastern European data and Latin American data, the Latin American data are the one which, uh, on average, they, they show the least discrepancy. Uh, Jukka, behind you, sir. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, Jukka Pirtila from UNU Wider, and now working on, on, on trying to improve the bead. Um, we agree. Uh, uh, some comments on the comments made by Professor Jen Jenkins. Uh, first of all, we are very grateful for these, um, uh, these very useful comments, and, and, and in, the, in the very latest version, we have tried to uh, actually take into account some of them, and the, or at, le at least uh, those which are, which are more technically oriented. So, uh, so, for example, mistakes have been corrected. And we, we completely share the view that the, it's, it's very good to um, ask the researchers to be explicit about the, about the data they use. And uh, in fact, this is the... Uh, this is now our fi final conclusion in the revised uh, uh, user guide. Uh, one point regarding the uh, multitude of series there are in the weed. Uh, one reason for that is that the, sometimes the, um, we also report, um, in addition to the, to the country average, we also re report um, uh, specific figures for rural and urban areas, and, and that's one of the reasons we, there are multiple series. <coughs> Uh, and, and we do give guidance to the researchers by, by giving this quality variable there that the, so uh, not researchers to use those, those uh, observations with the highest quality. But maybe as a further development, uh, one option would be to provide, in a sense, two versions of the data set. One, one is the full with, 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 with everything we can find, and the second one which is, a, in a sense, simplified with just a, one uh, observation for each country each year for a particular definition of, 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 of genie, like whether that refers to uh, uh, before or after taxis. Uh, so uh, that's uh, just one possibility, and perhaps uh, Stephen would like to comment on whether that would make sense. Okay, do we have any more questions? Or I would, uh, okay. Then, oh, a comment? Yes, all right. Uh, well. Thank you. Um, I hope it's okay that I make a, sort of a bit more like a comment, but, but uh, I hope then that you can comment on that. Um, the first one that I want to say is that a few years ago, um, when I started at WIDER, just before I came, to my horror, um, I saw that the WID was used for a paper that was published in Journal Development Economics, and it was a totally misuse of the WIT database. Um, together with a colleague, I prepared um, a review of that paper to the JDE, and the review was rejected. The editor at the time was a colleague called Easterly, and the, it was about aid and income inequality changes. It taught me a lesson. It taught me that the WIT can be terribly misused. And it made me somewhat nervous to take over the heritage of the WID. In addition to that, at the time, we had some transitional problems in terms of getting the WID updated. Those problems are recognized up front. We were not quick in getting the updating process going. And that's, I mean, I'm saying this in all honesty, and I can give you lots of good excuses, but that's what happened. Then uh, we were bashed very severely by ARC in a couple of meetings where we were told the wit is useless. So I went a little bit into my dark room and was reflecting a little bit, and then I consulted my academic board, and they said, you have to continue to keep the wit moving. Okay. So we went back, and we continued, 
and we went on with the process. But then, but then basically what happened, um, which sort of made us somewhat reflectful, was that in, certainly there was this other database out there which had been put out and it wasn't quite clear that it was actually essentially just the WID. It took a bit of time for us to figure out what was going on. Uh, we were never uh, contacted, we were never, so we have sort of, I mean, and I'm, I'm saying this in all respect, it is of course completely appropriate and okay that an outside researcher uses it, but internally we are sometimes jokingly referring to it as the stolen wit. Because we certainly saw that the uh, decrease in website hits and so on went down considerably. And I, I'm saying this in all honesty and I don't mean that it's perfectly fine for somebody to continue to the work. But we were behind, we were late, um, but then I was also somewhat scared because then we certainly discovered that DESA, this is sort of not exactly our equivalent, but uh, within the UN headquarters is the one that sort of makes statements and studies about inequality. They came out and we were asked to comment on a number of papers saying that inequality in a number of African countries have gone down and that was strictly against what we had found. So then back to the drawing board again. Um, now, um, we were in the process, we have been working uh, hard to get it updated and then by coincidence, and I'm saying this also just to say that um, I did not know of the work by the Journal of Income Inequality. I did not know about it until Nora four months ago, something like that, uh, when we then decided it was appropriate to have a special session. Th this session, and, and I really wish, and, and, and I hope it's okay that I just sort of make this plea, we are in a process of trying to figure out how we, as an institution, can help provide a public good and put the resources behind that which is bigger than what an individual researcher can do or not do. But we had, of course, also been doing some of this homework that has now been referred to. And the big question for us, of course, is how do we take the next step? I mean, how can we try to add to the general environment of researchers uh, in, in a good and productive and forward-looking way? And that's why I would like to express my appreciation for the work and, uh, that's been done. And really, this is for us, just, okay, this is now the next step. This is where do we move from here? And that's why we very much appreciate this interaction and this feedback between producers of data, users of data, such that we can figure out what it is that we as an institution can productively try uh, to do in, 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 in a helpful way. Thank you. Sorry, this became a bit okay. long. But. Um, so... Let's go back to the speakers and see if they have any uh, final comments. Let's start with Nora. Um, perhaps, sorry. Um, oh. All right. Can I just respond to Andrew Berg? First of all, I want to apologize if my remarks appeared ad hominem. It, it was certainly not intended that way. Uh, you just unfortunately happened to be here this morning and giving a, a paper about the SWID. And uh, I like the paper I, in many respects. Um, so my, I, I, I just want to point out that uh, I appreciate you know, you want answers. It's true that I'm a cyclist. I'm no longer a car owner. I live in central London. Um, but uh, beware of cars. They often go um, down wrong directions. Um, the, I, and I really do appreciate that you want answers. But I think, you know, there are issues. This quality coverage conundrum really just has, has to be recognized a bit more. And essentially, I guess my beef, if I do have a beef with your paper, is about not taking data is issues sufficiently uh, seriously, and uh, you, you, I like what you do in Table 4, for example, in the sensitivity analysis, but I would basically wanting uh, rather more. And I, I'd also point out that, uh, okay, I grumbled about SWID, but please note that I did talk about um, uh, WID use as well. The point about SWID is that it promises to be a magic, general, all-purpose solution. Okay? You don't have to provide the numbers, you're given the numbers, you use them. With SWID, it's the other way around. The responsibility is put on you, uh, the user. And so my points were very much the same to WID users. They have to address the same issues. It's just being done at, at different steps. 
and we have to we have to remember this so the bottom line is essentially the things that Tony was saying before everybody's been saying take data, data issues very carefully treat them seriously okay um, Francois behind you are you gonna um... <laughs> No, only uh, a few points. The first thing is that maybe uh, commenting on the comments by uh, Marcus, I think that uh, when we discuss all these issues, I mean, there is one actor which was missing in this uh, discussion, which is the National Statistical Office. Because all those people dealing with those databases, I mean, they cannot reinvent the surveys. I mean, they cannot uh, introduce questions which were not there. And uh, very much of uh, uh, the, the critiques that we can make and the, 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 the hard feelings that we have about uh, all these data are very much linked to uh, those uh, uh, people responsible for the survey. So does this mean that in uh, this uh, uh, Journal of, uh, of Economic Inequality uh, 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 issue, uh, there must be something about uh, this, there must be something uh, urging more uh, consultation between users and uh, producers of, uh, of, of those surveys. The uh, um, second comment, uh, maybe it's linked to what uh, uh, Stephen said and uh, also Marcus, and it's also linked to uh, the discussion with Andy. I think that where we have a problem with uh, this uh, noise in the data on uh, inequality, it is when we put uh, inequality on the right-hand side. Because here we have measurement error, and we know that uh, all those uh, coefficients will be uh, very much biased. And this means that if we find that inequality has no impact on the left-hand side variable, we don't know how to conclude. Maybe this is because there is too much measurement error on inequality. And the point made by Andy about why do we have, uh, don't we have the same problem with institutions? We have the same problem with institutions. This is very, very badly measured, and we don't really know what we do with, uh, with this. So I think that this is an invitation to take much more carefully uh, all those uh, uh, cross-country, panel cross-country uh, work, uh, looking more carefully to the uh, way to the uh, accuracy of the variables on the right-hand side. Uh, the final uh, point is about the question about uh, Salai Martin and uh, Mikowski. Uh, this is a different story. The uh, debate there was about not so much a distribution data, it is about the mean income data. So some people would like to, in uh, estimating global distribution, some people would like to use the mean income as given by the surveys, and some people say, okay, but this is not really uh, uh, accurate, or this is not a good representation of the average welfare in the economy because public goods are missing, and uh, so it is better to normalize all the distributional data by uh, national account, uh, by GDP per capita, or uh, uh, consumption per capita, whatever. Uh, so it is a different story because this is not uh, something which has to do with distributional data but simply with mean income, which is something different. And finally, a point on, the, on the Andrea. Uh, I didn't say that uh, uh, what was going on in Latin America was bad. Uh, I simply said that there was a problem uh, when uh, you had two databases which are not giving you the same kind of information. Uh, but... Uh, Overall, I would uh, say, and this is what I'm saying in the paper, I think that uh, SEDLAC is doing a rather good job. Uh, and uh, uh, this is really the best practice at uh, this stage. And the problem they have are coming from the surveys, not from the way in which they are using the surveys. Uh, so I think it is an important uh, point. Okay. Yeah, uh. I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, I think, you know, that Andy, I mean, Andy and I have been talking about this now for quite some time, and that's why you said you were scared of me, but I never say things in public very much. Uh, the issue, I think, here is what I said at the end of my presentation. I don't have, you know, I am no expert of imputations. I just, the same way as you, Andy, want to use data, I'd like to use that data, but I want to be sanctioned by somebody who is an expert. Now I have Stephen's opinion, and it makes me feel very uneasy. 
I think that uh, what we're trying to do with this special issue also is to begin to apply the same scientific demands on databases as we do on articles. I mean, articles that are not published in reputable journals usually are not taken as seriously as us. It doesn't mean that they're always right, like Finn said. So I think that one of the things that we could have as a convention is that these databases get scrutinized, and maybe, you know, this time maybe not everybody got it right, but it's the beginning of a process. And I think that that is what I'm asking from the data users, because we know that this data, many of them, like you said, come from imputation, etc. but we're learning what the problems might be, and therefore we have to be more careful in terms of how we use them, maybe do much more robustness checks using, you know, replacing the values when they're, uh, when there is hard data in the cases in which they're imputed, etc. And Finn, if I may, as I was listening to you, maybe WIDER is well positioned to start a process which is more formal in terms of how to do this interaction between users and producers and begin to generate certain conventions instead of everybody working in isolation so that uh, we never come to a conclusion of what is acceptable from the different points of view using science at the frontier as it is today. And, you know, and progress with progress as progress occurs. Thank you. Thank you. I think your, your sort of comments are very much in line with my own views about uh, where the wind should be going. So uh, we, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> Finn would be very happy if you sat down before, uh, before you go and just uh, flesh that out a little bit. Andrea, are you have any more comments to, to make? Or you're the last speaker who hasn't re-spoken. Yeah, I don't, far too many things have been said already, but let me make very quickly two points. First one, you said uh, that at the end of the session that, that, uh, that you are scared about the data issues. Let me instead stress one word that was used by Francois in his uh, talk today, progress. I think that we have made huge progresses in uh, understanding income inequality on all sides, theoretical and empirical. We have much better data and especially we are much more aware of all the problems with data. So we are moving on. The second point uh, is that uh, there is no, uh, no real tension between uh, national accounts and uh, uh, sample surveys, tax-based data and so on. They, tell us different stories with their own weaknesses and their own uh, uh, strengths. We have uh, to live with multiplicity of sources. So there is no easy way to simplify problems. So that's the problem of salt that seems to provide the right, the simple answer to a problem that is not possible to reduce to a single number. We have to live with different information and to understand why they are different. Okay, well thank you much. I just realized we've run 25 minutes over, which is almost a record, I think, and uh, just shows just how much interest there is in, in this topic and hardly anyone has been leaving the room. Um, so, thank you very much. Let's give a big hand to our uh, five speakers. And hopefully this will be a good input into uh, doing something, but uh, to get the WID uh, back in its central role and to make sure it's updated regularly and uh, we are aware of these uh, issues. So thank you very much. And uh, we, there's um, half an hour before the reception here. <laughs>